Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Tammy Talks here. Let's talk Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 15, episode 12, Trust Planning Issues. If you are brand new to my channel, I do breakdowns of various TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So if you enjoy that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, thumbs up, lost my train of thought. Thumbs up the video if you enjoy this particular piece of comment, content and then hop in the comment section, y'all, so we can talk about everything that happened on tonight's episode, all right? So the episode starts off with Shrek. She's asking her son, Cairo, um, how's his music going and all that type of stuff that's going on with it. How are things going? How are we feeling? He said things are going good. He'll let her hear some of the edited um, versions. She wants to hear both. She then goes on to talk about how she's working on She by Sheree. And um, because she finally wants to get these joggers out, she said that men are asking about the joggers. I would like to know who, but sure. She said, but there are men asking about the joggers. And she um, wants him to model some of those things for him, for her. He doesn't look, you know, super convinced, like he really wants to do it, but it's his mom. So, of course, Cairo is going to help her out. She said that she uh, finally hired a designer that's going to help with She by Sheree. So she's in the process of picking up fabrics, picking out different um, designs and patterns, what works, what doesn't work, what she wants to keep, what she doesn't want to keep. She by Sheree is not coming. Okay. Just so that everyone is clear, She by Sheree is not coming. Okay. So no one keeps looking for it. It's not happening. So we didn't move over to Candy. Candy is having a small birthday party for Ace over in the guest house. Um, she said that Ace's birthday is in the middle of the week, which for kids, when you're that young, you want to have a party. It's not always the best or doesn't always happen. So she wants to invite some, some, of, their cousins, some of his cousins over. She's inviting Kenya and baby Brooklyn and then Drew and Drew's two, um, two kids. I said, oh, Sonya and Deuce can't come? It's because Deuce is bad. <laughs> but Sonya and Deuce were noticeably not invited, which I was kind of shocked about because Deuce has to be close in age to Ace, right? But I don't, I'm kind of shocked. So Kenya suggests they're talk, sitting around talking about what happened when that man hopped the fence. And Kenya suggests that they get like some type of security that can patrol the area, patrol, you know, what sits around them. She talks about how Cardi B lives about a mile up the street from her, has um, like security that just kind of sits outside her gates. Drew says in you know her area that she also has armed like guards that are just outside the gate, just like as security. That comes with the area that they're living in. To my knowledge, or to my understanding, I'll say Candy lives very much in like Atlanta. Not in the suburb, but in Atlanta. Candy said that she likes living in Atlanta. She likes the area that she's in because it's convenient for her. It's close to everything. Kenya said, yeah, you know, it's close to the airport for when you need to go back and forth, you know, for your play. Candy then goes on to tell them how the play got shut down because of the new wave of, was it Omicron? Of the new strain of COVID that came through, got some of the cast members sick. They shut the entire thing down. So then Candy's in her confessional talking about how, um, well, she gets kind of emotional about how a lot of people think that because, you know, she has money now that she doesn't have to work for anything. You know, she came from a single parent household. She has worked her way up through the business. She's still working. We see Candy working her ass off on this show. So she kind of hates the fact that everyone is making it seem as if she doesn't have to work for anything. She's not doing anything um, extra to get to where she is. Things aren't handed to her. And she is just really upset about the fact that this play kind of got shut down. Kenya and Drew didn't know anything about it. You know, they they expressed their their sorries and all that kind of stuff for her before talking about um, the, the trip that's going on in Jamaica. Drew says she hopes the trip is nothing like Blue Ridge, which Marlo completely completely fumbled on her first her first trip of by with having her peach. Marlo won't get a peach next year. I think we all can agree on that. We all can recognize and see that. Marlo won't get a peach. I would be very shocked if she did. 
While this is happening, we pan over to Marlo and Sheree. They're out shopping. Marlo's telling Sheree how she talked to her nephews. I forgot which one. Um, but one of the nephews said he misses her. He's ready to come home. The other nephew lays in across the bed all day and plays ro Roblox, um, like on his iPad, on his phone. He's not showering. He's not brushing his teeth. He just lays across the bed and plays video games all day. And Marlo had the audacity to make a comment about her sister's parenting. You mean the sister that has four toddlers already, but yet you gave her two more teenage boys? You, you get to say absolutely nothing, Marlo, because you chose to send them boys there. You chose to send them there. If you want them to be parented a certain way, they should have stayed in your house. But while they're over there with your sister and she's doing the dirty work and the heavy lifting with raising these boys at this time, you don't get to comment about that. So no one cares about your opinion on what your sister should be doing with the nephews that you sent over to her. So they then talk about what happened on the trip. Sanya arrives. Sanya says that she feels that, you know, she rocks with Kenya, but she feels that Kenya was wrong because of how she came in and didn't, wasn't there for Marlo. And she felt that Kenya ruined the trip. And what a lot of people are failing to realize is that Kenya didn't ruin the trip. Marlo ruined the trip being obsessed with Kenya. You wanted Kenya to stay there. She didn't want to, okay? You can't make her do that because you didn't pay for this trip. You can't exclude her from things because you didn't pay for this trip. This is a cash trip. This is something that Bravo and um, the good folks, the Real Housewives, the producers, this is what they put together. This is what they are paying for, what they put the bill for. You may have came up with the idea, but this is not your trip. So the fact that Marlo was like, the fact that Marlo really thought that she could control what went on with her and Kenya was, was silly in the first place. Nonetheless, um, Sanya um, tells them that she wants to make sure that everybody knows on this trip, um, to Jamaica, it's a couple's trip. She wants to make that very clear so no one feels away. So that means you can either bring a date or you can just bring a friend so that when they're doing things that are um, that are tandem, tandem um, activities, everybody has someone to do that with. So she decides to call Kenya because she wants to make sure that Kenda being, uh, being the other single woman on the cast fully understands that or fully knows that. She called because, you know, Kenya made this whole fuss about when they were in New York for that play. She didn't know that it was going to be a couple's trip, even though Candy told her. Right. So um, Sanya calls Kenya on FaceTime, tells her, I want to make it very, very clear. It's a couple's trip. Very clear. Couple, very clear, and it's like, girl. So Kenya was like, oh, girl, please. I, I, I know what that means. Click, hangs up on her. I didn't feel the way. Sanya was being very, very condescending with the way she was telling Kenya that. Very condescending. And I just feel like Sanya came in and really attached herself to Marlo and Sheree. Imagine being new to Housewives. And, and, and initially, you, you have Candy and Kenya, who you can't be cool with. You got Candy and Kenya, and you choose to attach yourself to Marlo and Sheree. So when Kenya hangs up, um, Sanya is in Sanya, Marlo, and Sheree are like, oh shit. Sanya, you know, likes to wants to get bugged. You know, we're gonna talk about that because I don't like how that went out. And it's like, you're not gonna do nothing to Kenya. You're not gonna have the same rah-rah with Kenya that you um typically have with you're not going to have the same rah-rah with Kenya that you typically have with um with Drew you're not going to do that so then we turn around and then we see Candy and Candy is like why is she even pushing you to bring somebody knowing that you're going through a divorce and that's the other thing you know Kenya's going through a divorce you know Kenya's not talking to anybody so I don't know why like if everybody's going to bring a date cool why does it why do you if you are phrasing it as you want them to bring just a friend Phrase it a different way that it's not saying couples, couples, couples. Kenya says she don't want to hear that shit. She knows what couples mean. 
And I tweeted that. Kenya knows what a couple's trip means. You don't have to keep saying it over and over and over and over again. You were being condescending. And see, Sanya thinks that she can get little shit off like that and no one's going to notice. But that doesn't work with everybody. So we then see Merlo going to talk to a therapist. She went to, got re, um, referred from Sheree's therapist, Jack Daniels, got referred to go speak to someone else. She wants to talk about her parenting style with her nephews. They pray, they hold hands, and they pray. Afterwards, Marlo immediately starts crying. I said, oh. <laughs> immediately starts crying. So Marlo was crying because she feels that um, she's nervous. She doesn't know what's going to happen. She feels overwhelmed because she feels like her nephews are taking things for granted. She's not consistent with their punishment. So she'll tell them to do something. They'll say they're going to do it. They don't do it. So then she'll come back and she'll yell at them. And it's like, Merlo, they're teenagers. And it's no, like, it's no, like, excuse for, like, why they wouldn't, like, do what they're told. But they're teenagers. We all remember what we were like as teenagers. No one did every single thing that their parent told them to do. You know what I mean? And I feel like Merlo was, like, really taking that to heart. So then Marlo is saying how she wants to be their best friend, but she wants their respect as well. So it's up to her to try to find like a healthy balance or to find, you know, that middle ground where they're giving her the best of both worlds. Either you're going to be, uh, I want you to listen to me, do what I say, respect me. But that doesn't mean that we still can't do fun things together, like hang out and watch, you know, watch movies and go shopping and do all that type of stuff. And so Marlo was struggling with that. But what Marlo kind of has to understand is that kicking them out because they're they're not cleaning up, they're not listening to you when they're going through a very traumatic time in their life, that doesn't give you license to say, well, fuck it then, y'all can go ahead. I don't want to deal with y'all anymore. And that's what Marlo was going through. She's crying, not from nerves, but she's crying because she knows she did something wrong. That's guilt that is seeping out. Because whenever a person has such a brash reaction like that, that's guilt. It's guilt. So we see Candy. Kayla and Riley are in town. Um, Kayla and Riley are in town from New York. And Todd and Candy want to talk to them about their trust, their will, and the things that they're setting, setting up and putting into place. So the shade of production to show the list of assets because they're saying that we're going to, we want to take our assets, divide everything up, make sure that everything is like specifically outlined the way that it should be. They show all Candy's assets. I got a screenshot. Okay. Why is Sarah's baby making me upset? Okay. Um, so I have the screenshot here. So let's take a look, see at it. So Bravo for us highlighted the different assets that they have. So they said for candy, we have song publishing, the candy factory, bedroom candy, her house, her guest house, Mama Joyce's house, Tags Boutique. Okay. We then pop over to Todd. It says New Jersey condo. <laughs> Unnecessary. Completely, completely unnecessary. But they want to make sure that everything is set up a way that it should go so that the, their kids are all taken care of. Todd feels that he want, he doesn't want to give them all the money up front. So he throws out the arbitrary um, number of $5 million. If we have $5 million that we're leaving to you, I don't want to give you all that money up front and then you make a couple bad business moves and now you're down to $125,000. He wants to give you money at different stages of your life. Riley said, absolutely not. Riley wants all the money up front so that if she wants to make a business decision in her 20s, she can do that. Todd then comes back and said, well, no, I want you to be fully prepared to make that business decision. So then Riley points out that Candy and Todd treat their kids' lifestyles very, very different. And he doesn't, she doesn't think that Todd would be as lenient as Candy with how much she spends, what she, you know, what she does, like how she manages her money. Kayla 
agrees and feels that Todd kind of only talks to her as business. She said that Candy has a more nurturing touch. You know, Candy is more willing to, which a lot of moms are, but Candy is more willing to talk to you about what you do, like what decisions you might have made, help you work through it. Todd is all business, business, business. And we've seen over the seasons how Kayla has felt about some, um, her, some of her interactions with Todd and how that, you know, Todd, for all intents and purposes, he's not really nurturing. And his whole thing is he wants Kayla to work and work and work and work and get everything out the mud. And that's not always the best approach with a lot of people. Yes, it teaches Kay um, Kayla financial stability and independence and all her bills are getting paid and all this other stuff. But she also doesn't have that relationship with her father where she feels that she can go to him if she does mess up. And that's definitely what you don't want. So let's say Kayla does slip up and she does fall on hard times because anything can happen, right? She probably doesn't have that, that sense of security, emotional security, that she can go to Todd and explain that to him without getting a lecture about why the money might, might have gone wrong. And that's what they're trying to point out. So then Kayla, I'm sorry, Candy says that they don't think the same and she doesn't really trust him to make all the best decisions in the way that she would. Todd takes it as he's offended that Candy doesn't trust him, says the kids are ungrateful, and he kind of walks out. Kayla will psych his feelings to her. Candy said that he'll be okay. He'll be okay. But it's true, though. The way that Candy is allowing Riley to live and figure herself out now in her 20s to where she's now in school, Todd is not going to do that. He wouldn't have paid for that New York apartment. He wouldn't pay for all the things that, that Riley has. And we can see that it's evident by how he would not allow Candy to pay for and do a lot of that stuff for Kayla. So you can't, and I, I mean, Blaze and Ace would be coming up very, very differently than Riley if it was solely up to time. That's just how that is. So we see that Sanya is calling all the girls, even though everyone's going to be at her um, house that weekend for like a little pre-Jamaica um, party. She wants to turn it into like a little shindig for Sheree. I said, it sounds very last minute, <laughs> very last minute. And we got to see just how last minute it was. We see Sheree. She goes to look at fabrics for She by Sheree. Um, again, nothing's going to come out of this. We're just going to, you know, make a scene to fill space. We then see Candy's in her office. Ty comes in. Candy asks how he's doing. He said he feels like a million bucks, okay? She said, even with the meeting with our kids. And he said, oh, I don't fuck with them. That's it. I get what he was saying, but it comes across the way when you say, oh, I don't fuck with my daughters. That comes across the way. So he said that he took it personal that Candy doesn't trust him to do what what needs to be done to take care of Kayla. and I mean, to take care of Riley. And he said, that's not what I said. Candy said, I feel that you would not take care of them the way that I would. There's a very clear difference. Candy knows that Ty will make sure that um, Riley and Blaze and Ace are perfectly fine. But the way that Candy, like she says, she's more lenient with money and helping out, he's not going to do. He agrees, that's true. So he says for Candy, when they're doing this estate planning and will planning, write down exactly what you want done, how you wanted to do it, to where they don't have to ask me for anything, and we'll be good with that. Great. Now we've come to a, a, um, an understanding. We don't want to hear about it no more. Okay? Everybody's feelings are going to be okay, because now the P, everybody knows their place. Everybody knows what they're going to get. Everybody's going to get what they're going to get the way that they should be getting it. All right? Candy talks about how um, the producer from that play that she was working on, when it got shut down, reached out to her about being a producer on another play. Candy's team doesn't think she should do it because what if this play fails as well? Ty points out how so many people go into everything and they expect greatness and perfection and awards and notoriety off of the very first try. And sometimes it has to be you fall down a couple times before you finally get the, the golden egg. And that's basically what he's telling her. Don't stop doing it just because you didn't, you know, 
knock it out the park flawlessly the first time. If this one fails, then this one fails. It shows your passion and your drive for, you know, the actual, for, for Broadway. So Candy thinks about it and then hopefully she wants to go through and do it again. I think what Ty said make perfect sense. Don't try something, you stumble, and then now you don't want to do it again. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So finally, we get to Sanya with this party. Marlo gets there first. Marlo definitely had an attitude when Candy walked in. When Candy was like, oh, so we getting kicked out again? We going to get kicked out of here? We going to get kicked out? And I would have been the same way. You ruined the trip. You kicked us out because you had a bad couple hours that you caused. Marlo could have very, sorry, Marlo could have very well let the rest of that day play out, let the rest of that night play out. The next day could have gone a whole lot smoother. You can ignore Kenya. Kenya is going to ignore you. And it could have been a perfectly fine little two-night trip, but whatever. Kenya comes in, speaks to everybody, definitely speaks to Marlo very clearly. Hey, Marlo. Marlo kind of half ass speaks back says in her confessional, she's not going to let Kenya come in and ruin her mood. She literally came in and said hi to you. How is that bothering you? She has such a hard on for Kenya. It is weird. So Kenya's walking through the house because um, Sanya wanted Kenya to kind of walk through and look at all the different, um, like give her some tips on home decor and stuff like that. So Kenya's walking through like the rug. We need drapes, okay? We need drapes. We no fake plants. We need real plants. You know, just kind of giving her advice on different things. Um, Sanya wants to use this opportunity to um, bring her to the bring Kenya to the side and address her hanging up on her. Kenya said, like I said, it was condescending. The tone was condescending. Sanya doesn't feel it that way. She thinks that Kenya was maybe feeling away, so she received it differently. Um, meanwhile, while they're going back and forth, you know, Kenya's saying that I'm going to hang up if I don't like the way that somebody is talking to me. You know, after everything that happened with Mark, Kenya definitely has PTSD. Anytime somebody so much as like slightly elevates her voice, it clearly takes her back to how Mark was talking to her. So she feels that she does not want to deal with that. She's going to disconnect herself from that. And she hung up. Do I think she should have hung up? Absolutely not. I think that's petty. But, I mean, she did it. Sanya apologized. Um, things were okay. Meanwhile, out in the kitchen, Marlo was like a grown woman. should never hang up. Marlo, bye. You look like you hang up on people too. Whatever. So Sheree comes in and they're they're very loudly in the house. All right, she's here, 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 here. Like they are at the door. All right, y'all, y'all, hi. We gonna sing. Like I know Sheree heard. So Sheree comes in. They they wanted the music to play, but the music is not working. They're not set up. I said, <laughs> strike one. The music is not set up. So then. They come in and she tries to get Sheree to get on the photo booth right around, right, right away. It's like one of those 360 booths. They said that the battery has to charge. It's going to take 20 minutes. I said, oh, this is going downhill very fast. Drew says, if you can't host a house party, how are you going to host a trip in Jamaica? I agree. This is at your house. The food wasn't ready. You had Stella wrote some wine. <laughs> I'm not saying... That you got to have bottles of Moet, bottles of um, any expensive champagne or anything like that. We don't need Ace of Spades. We don't need, you know, top shelf this, top shelf that. But Stella, Stella Rosa, that's at the, the local corner, corner gas station for like $10.99. So the photo booth is finally charged. All right. While they're um, waiting for that, while they're waiting for the people to get it together, the man is passing out beef patties. He's like, this is chicken. This is, this is, um, I think they were beef patties. This is chicken. This is um, beef. They're going around and they're like, oh, so who cooked? Your mom? She was like, no, we had to cater. And everybody was like. <laughs> so everyone's talking about how dry the food is. Dry. So. 
they now get um they're on the, the 360 booth and the lady can't get it to work so she's sitting over there okay you press start okay so we're doing again one two three and start and it's still not working so they were like oh why don't we just go eat first and it's like okay well this is really strike three this is strike three so nothing is working so they go in the kitchen and they're to bringing more food out and kenya yells out that the food is dry <laughs> And then she takes off running. But everybody was like, there's no bartender. The food is not ready. It's like there's streamers up. And then Drew was like, is this Deuce's birthday party? It did look very much so like Ace's party. Aside from the fact that uh, Candy had a whole video like um, like a whole video like truck video game truck outside, but it looked very basic. It looked very, very basic. So they start talking um, about the trip and it becomes Drew saying that Sheree threw a rock and hit her hand. Sheree was like throwing tomatoes at you. Tomato, tomato, tomato. And I was like, the fuck is going on? So she, um, Kenya said that Drew loves to fight. So they're going back and forth. And I have noticed that every single episode, Drew is arguing with somebody. Drew started that argument with Sheree. And what a lot of these ladies have to remember is a lot of these arguments could be avoided if they all just shut up. You don't always have to say something just because that person is by you. I've been in many situations where I have been around people that I do not like, that I do not talk to, that I have an issue with. And it does not always have to result in an argument. It doesn't. It just doesn't. Doesn't have to always result in an argument by any means whatsoever. But here we are. So Sheree um, then says that every time they have a sit down, Drew was arguing with somebody. Drew then calls Sheree old and cold. Sheree says she better hope to look as good as her when she gets her age. Marlon, in her confessional, said Drew is pretty. Yes, but she should hope to look as good as Sheree does right now at 60. Somebody yells out Sheree is 52. <laughs> she knew damn well Sheree wasn't 60. She knew that. So then they asked Drew to sing happy birthday to Sheree. I don't know why, but okay. So Drew was like, I'm not using my voice for her. So then it becomes a ruckus. And then Drew sings. Drew has a pretty voice. Drew has always had a really nice voice. She just ain't putting on no music. So Drew sings and everybody was like, good, yay. And Sheree is like, you know, she, I, she doesn't know how to apologize. So I'll take it that this is her apology. Take it because this is all you're going to get out of Drew. Okay. So then Sanya sits them all down to outline her five rules for Jamaica. She has one of those like, you know, notepads that you see in the boardroom where they're flipping the pages. So. First, water-friendly hair, because you don't want nobody saying that they can't get in the water or get in the pool or get in anything and do anything. Two, no standoffs. So she wants everybody to engage with each other, have fun, do all the things that we need everybody else to do. Three, no props. Drew, don't bring no more bones and throw them at people. Four, no weed, no jail. Um, weed is not legal in Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica and you can definitely, even though it's in abundance everywhere, we were definitely sneaking and eating. I'm eating because I ate a brownie. We were definitely sneaking and um, we were smoking, not just walking through the resort, smoking out in the open. Weed is not legal in Jamaica. So she said, if you go to jail, I'm leaving your ass there. And I know that's right. Don't go in another country and do some shit that's going to get you arrested or put in jail and think that everybody is going to rock and roll with you because we're not. <laughs> I'm going home too. And then finally, she says she's there to rep IFIT. Be on your best behavior. Don't be down here clowning, arguing in the driveway, tearing up this um, these, these hotel rooms, B&B, this house, wherever we're staying. Let's, let's not. So we'll see how the trip goes. Uh, we see the preview for next week. Marlo tells Candy that she's only known in, in, in Atlanta. Marlo's just saying anything at this point. Bye. That sounds stupid. But until then, if you guys have not 
Subscribe to my channel. Thumbs up this video. Hop in the comment section. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.